Well, good morning from Hong Kong. It's seven in the morning, a little early to be out in my opinion, but today we're going to Macau. Special day. So we've got our tickets for Macau. Yeah, 160 Hong Kong dollars each. It's just over 20 US bucks. Yeah. And they give you your seats as you basically arrive just before after you go through your immigration. So yeah. we just got these little stickers for 17M and 17K. And guys, don't forget to bring your passport because technically you're going to a different special administrative region. You're going from Hong Kong to Macau. And you know what? The ride was a lot smoother than I was expecting. I think it's because we were on the second floor of the boat this time. Yeah, and that, that is the fact that you were like sleeping most of the time. <laughs> It was so, way too early to be traveling, so I don't like fairness, a half hour almost now. everyone was sleeping on that, right? Yeah. So. so yeah, now we're basically we're gonna go catch our transportation. We're looking to find one of the free shuttle buses to the hotels. Yes. We're looking for the possibly the Venetian bus. <laughs> and then we get started. <laughs> I feel so cheeky. We're being so cheap instead of paying for a bus or for the taxi. No, that's, that's what free everyone shuttle. Does that's what everyone that's does true. Here. So I'm not sure if we already mentioned this, but today is just a day trip from Hong Kong So we're not actually staying here in Macau. We did that once before and it is super expensive here Like everything's overpriced. So we thought we would just visit for the day and yeah We're gonna be making a little guide and showing you a few of the different things that you can do here and eat here We're gonna be sampling lots of good food All right, so we figured since we took the free shuttle to the Venetian, we should probably visit the Venetian. What do you think? Yeah, so we've just been checking it out here, and it, it's definitely not, obviously not like Venice, but I guess it's a casino version of Venice. It's a bit like Vegas. It's a bit like Vegas. <laughs> and yeah, you know, Macau has been, call been called the Vegas of China, so I yeah. Mean, yeah, we're gonna go check out a few other casinos, and then I think we're gonna spend the rest of the day exploring more of the historic ruins. Yeah, more and of eating the cultural a, side. More of the cultural stuff, and then eating a lot of street food as well too. I have to say, walking through casinos is exhausting. These buildings are massive. We're currently trying to reach the Parisian from the Venetian. I feel like we've been walking for 15 or 20 minutes. Still not in sight. of hotels and casinos for a while and we've walked over to Taipa and over here we're gonna be visiting the Taipa Houses Museum there's also like a nice little park with wetlands behind us so yeah it's a lot quieter and more peaceful over here I would say I prefer it <laughs> So what did you think of the museum? Yeah, it was pretty cool. It's free to visit and there's about four different houses you could go into. Mm -hmm. Each house had its own different kind of uh, 
theme or gallery. Yeah. One was a living museum, there was another where there's artwork, there's other where there's old photographs. So yeah, if you pop by here, you can check out the different houses. Just pop in and it doesn't take long to visit them at all. I've now been walking around for a few hours and I'm starting to feel the hangar vibes. Yeah, so it's a good time to go eat. It's just before noon and it's time to scarf down on some Mackinac Street food. Let's get food! So we kind of have a list of things we want to try here in Macau, yes. and this wasn't on here. Wasn't so on the list, but we saw it. It looked nice interesting. Surprise. So what's this one? So this is an egg pudding, but I got the chocolate egg pudding. So yeah, they also like green tea, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like an egg. They've sliced off the top. I don't even know how you make this, to be honest. Like, do you shake the egg until it's creamy? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> we have no idea what this is, and that's what makes it so exciting. Mm. Well, it does not taste like boiled eggs, so that's excellent. It's really creamy, look at that. Is it, like is it sweet? Like, how is yeah, it? Yeah, it's literally like pudding. Okay. Maybe it's just like mm. pudding that's been put inside of the eggshell. Maybe that's the, just the mm. preparation of it. Look. Oh, wow. That's this good. is a mystery to me. No idea how it's made, but it is so delicious. Wow. I'm Sam. Sam doesn't like eggs, so he was like, no, I won't have one. <laughs> so you can eat it all You're then? You're missing out. Seriously. This is like chocolate pudding. So creamy, so smooth. Unbelievable. So it took us a while to find a place that was serving pork chops this early, but we finally yeah, found Yeah, some of them one. were gonna start serving until 2 p.m. And it's Imagine around that. noon right now, so oh <laughs> bummer. But we found finally found somewhere. And this this pork chop bun is one of the most popular uh, street foods you can find in Macau. Yeah. It's basically Oh, oh wow, you. here comes our tea too. Bubble it's tea. basically considered uh, a Macani specialty. Uh-huh. And it's almost considered like uh, a Macau. Macanese hamburger. Yeah, right? Macau's take on a hamburger. So you You've got your pork chop in the middle, yeah. and then you have a crispy bun. Well, it's crispy on the outside, and it's, it's supposed to be soft on the inside. So yeah. I'm, I am dripping sauce all over the place. Time for me to just take a bite. Next up, we're having pastéis de nata, and this is where you start to see the Portuguese influence in Macanese cuisine. This is something that you find everywhere in Portugal. We had these when we were in Lisbon. There's a really famous shop um, in Belém. And yeah, these are really tasty. <laughs> I've had these often. I know. So let's dig <laughs> yeah. in. So excited to be having them again. Mm. And the Macanese mm. take on it is really good. Mm. Really good. Look at that. It's like so custardy inside. Wow. And we got these from what is considered to be a famous place for them. It's called Lord Stow's. Lord Stow's, yeah. Yeah. It's not from the original shop, but it's mm. from one of the branches. And uh, yeah, we were just really lucky to bump into it. It's so flaky. <laughs> the exterior, look at that. Can you see the layers there? It's like new food. So I have to say, I really enjoyed visiting this area, Taipa. I hadn't been here before when I was last in Macau. And it's pretty cool. It just feels more historic. It's colorful, great street food. So next up, we're gonna head to Sonado Square. And to get there, we're gonna make use of some of the free transportation provided by the casino. Updates. So the free shuttle that they used to have from the Galaxy Hotel to the area around Sonato Square a few years ago. No longer runs, what? <laughs> so we're going to the Star World. Instead. Yeah. And so then that's from there, us. I think we're gonna be walking about 20 minutes, the guy said. Yeah, so. it's getting us halfway there, and then we have to walk. We're getting a little, <laughs> we're getting a little spoiled, I'd say. <laughs> to 
Coronado Square, but then we spotted these really pretty gardens, so we're taking a bit of a detour. Yeah, it's been nice so far, and we've just been walking around, and I think we're probably only like five or ten minutes away from where we want to be, so getting closer. <laughs> at the moment so we're at Sonata Square this is where we've been trying to, to walk to yeah, now for a while time? yeah and I've just been taking some time lapses so setting the camera up on the tripod and I think we're gonna try to go find a bite now we're getting a little peckish again again and you know what it's looking super Christmassy around here it is check it out it's only you know what it's like what 19 days away from Christmas so. yeah but by the time you watch this Christmas will be long gone happy 2017 <laughs> is just a little bit too crowded for me. We're at a standstill. We're not moving. Not going anywhere. Yeah, this Man. is Saint, made it to St. Paul's Ruins. Yeah. <laughs> we still haven't found food though, so we're getting getting a little hangry. We have St. Paul's Ruins off in the background and Sam ready to sample more food. Yeah, so something you're gonna find in Macau, well just about everywhere, especially around the St. Paul's Ruins, is you get this, this beef jerky that's for sale. Yeah. And you buy these big slabs and they cut it up for you, like there's just a huge amount here. So I'm gonna try it. I, think it's, I did sample this one, it was sweet. Is it beef or pork? That's mm. the question. So yeah, it's pork. Pork. <laughs> pork jerky. Mmm, it's really nice. It's got like a sweet glaze on it. Kind of reminds me of um, if you've ever had a a cooked ham that's been cooked in like a like molasses maple or, syrup. or maple syrup or something like that. Very Canadian maple Ka syrup. Kind uh -huh. of kind of has that glaze that glaze type uh, sweetness on the outside, and it's nice meat. It's not unlike other jerkies I've had before. It's not as chewy. Um, it basically you just bite into it and the meat basically disintegrates in your mouth. So it's nice. It's uh, <laughs> we've got a lot. Look at that, <laughs> man. We're gonna be here for a while. So we're still trying to eat our way around the city here, and it's starting to rain. <laughs> Today was supposed to be zero percent chance of precipitation. And but with all these clouds, I'm, what's I'm actually surprised it didn't <laughs> rain earlier. Anyways, we found our next snack, and we're having almond cakes. So check those out. It looks really powdery and it actually has chunks of almond in it. Wow. So let's and see. we saw these being freshly made. Mm. So it's mm. pretty amazing. That's why that's how we decided on the store. We're like, oh, they're making them right outside. Mm. So how are those? Good. It's quite dry. And it's almost like a chalky, like powdery texture. So if Wait. you're planning on having <laughs> a few, you probably want tea or like some kind of beverage a, nearby. Want a bubble tea or Mm. We want to have a bubble tea nearby. We didn't get a bubble tea actually. <laughs> That's next. That's nice. But yeah, it's really nice. Really tasty. Kind of a nice like Christmas treat. It's almond for some reason. It seems like a Christmassy ingredient. All right, so Sam is now rocking a purple drink in his hand. <laughs> yeah. What could that possibly be? So we've had uh, bubble tea in both Taiwan and in Hong Kong. Yeah. But we haven't had it in Macau, mm -hmm. and we haven't had taro before. So this yeah. is purple color, and you can see it still has the tapioca jellies at the bottom. Yeah. But time to try it. Mm. All right, so taro milk. Mm. What does taro milk taste like? <laughs> it's really sweet. 
it has uh, a bit of a creamy taste and you can you definitely can taste the taro it's uh does it it's taste strong. like potato like potato milk <laughs> a little bit it still tastes a bit like tea though too it's really good so next we're heading into museo de macao we have not decided whether or not we actually want to go into the museum still debating that we've been walking around a lot and visiting a museum involves more walking i'd be pretty happy to just enjoy the view maybe eat some more so sam what's the one determining factor on whether you want to visit a museum or not what do you always ask can we take photos? Can we, I thought you were going to say, is it free? Oh, is, is it, it free, free too? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're like three things. If it doesn't meet those criteria, then sometimes I just do not go in. So that was made easy. The exhibit was actually closed, so we can only enjoy the terrace. But the terrace has some pretty cool views. So we're here. <laughs> So Sam, last attraction of the day, where are we? So we are at Montefort. Montefort. Yeah, it is starting to rain quite a bit. It's starting to rain and it's been a long day, so we're gonna head back and leave you with these magnificent views. We should probably say thank you to the Wynn Hotel for that private transfer to the ferry <laughs> terminal. We're the only people on the shuttle bus, literally. And, and we didn't even stay at their hotel. to a nondescript hotel room somewhere in Asia. Today we're going to be talking Macau travel tips because we recently traveled there on a yeah. day trip from Hong Kong and actually we've also been there. We went there maybe like three years ago and actually yeah. stayed overnight. So we thought, why not share some of the tips, some of the things we've learned for anyone out there planning a trip there. And because we've done both of those types of trips, we think uh, we think we can offer something for just about mm -hmm. everyone. So you, yeah, you can do it by day from Hong Kong and yeah. you can also stay overnight too. So as usual, we've got our notes in front of us on right. the computer, so you're going to see us staring down, but that's just so we give you accurate information and we're not making stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. So how, like, how a lot of people describe Macau is they call it the Vegas of China. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's not really fair because Macau actually generates seven times the amount of revenue as the, the strip on Vegas. Cha -ching, cha -ching. So if anything, Vegas should be called, <laughs> you know, it should be the, Vegas should be called Vegas. the Macau of, of the United America. States. The yeah. Macau of America. <laughs> so like, that is how much uh, gambling is a part of Macau. But Macau is also way more than just gambling. It also has a lot of colonial history and you can really see that when you're walking around in the old town. It's just very Portuguese, like the buildings, the floor tiles, even the cuisine. So even if you're not into gambling, it's really worth visiting. Right, and there's also a lot of really like fascinating street foods as well. Mm -hmm. That are, it's called Macanese cuisine. It's a combination of Portuguese and Southern Chinese with a lot of Southeast Asian uh, ingredients. So yeah. quite fascinating <laughs> stuff. So the local currency is the Macau Pataka. I had no idea, so I was calling it Macau dollar, Macanese dollar the whole time I was there, which is pretty embarrassing. It is. But anyway, <laughs> the exchange is one US dollar to eight patacas. Yeah, and it's basically almost identical to the Hong Kong dollar. Mm -hmm. And that leads into our next point, whereas if you're coming from Hong Kong, you can use Hong Kong dollars in yes. Macau. It's widely accepted. Yeah. But here's the catch. If you do take out uh, the Macau patacas, yeah. if you are if you have quite a bit of them, you're gonna want to especially exchange your coins before you go back to Hong Kong, yeah. because those coins are not accepted in Hong Kong. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a bit of a double standard. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, yeah, if you do have Hong Kong extra Hong Kong dollars, do bring them in and spend them in Macau. It is possible to do that. 
So our next point is transportation. How do you get to Macau? And there are actually lots of different ways. Right. I would say probably the most popular if you're coming from Hong Kong would be the ferry. Right. And you can take the ferry from Hong Kong Island, Kowloon, or from Hong Kong International Airport. Yeah, so you have those different options. Mm -hmm. And so that's arriving from the, that's let's say arriving from Hong Kong. But you can also arrive from mainland China. There are buses from like Guangzhou and other places. Uh, Shenzhen, different types of places. They also have ferries too. Mm -hmm. And then of course there is the airport and something to keep in mind, even if you're going to visit Hong Kong, not just Macau, is that uh, the Macau airport has some really good budget flights. Yes. So you may actually be able to fly into Macau cheaper than Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're thinking of flying into Hong Kong, especially somewhere from Southeast Asia, uh, consider also Macau because you may get a much better deal. I remember the one time we flew in from Chiang Mai, we got a really good uh, yeah. price from Air Asia. Yeah. So yeah, do consider that. And you know what? Speaking of flights, we should also mention you can come to Macau by helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to arrive like a boss, you want to arrive in style. I think it's like about $500 yeah, it's for about one way. $500, but it's only 16 minutes from right. Hong Kong. So if you're in a rush, you want to do gambling, you know, take the helicopter <laughs> and you'll be there in no time. So speaking of the ferry, you're going to save a little bit of money if you go on a weekday as opposed to the weekend. It's just mm -hmm. slightly cheaper. Um, you're looking at around just over 20 US dollars for an economy class. Yeah. And that's perfectly adequate. I mean, uh, it's only an hour ride. So, and there's departures leaving every like... Very frequently, yeah. like 15 to 30 minutes. Right, and you can go any time of day. You can leave really early in the morning, you can come back late at night or vice yeah. versa. So it's really easy. We've always just shown up and bought our ticket, um, like right from the stands, yeah. right when we want to go. And that's probably fine on weekdays, but if there's like a really big event going on in Macau or it's on a weekend, a busy time of year, I recommend booking in advance and you can do that on TurboJet's website. I've Triple also Jet. I've also once booked it online. It was really easy. Okay. They accept credit cards, stuff like that. So of course. super easy. <laughs> so next let's talk about accommodations in Macau and we've gotta tell you, just like Hong Kong, it is not cheap. I would go as far as saying that it can be more expensive than staying in Hong Kong. Yeah, it is. There, uh, Hong Kong does have budget options. You can stay mm -hmm. in dorms. In Macau, that's basically non-existent. Yeah. Uh, I remember even the first time I visited Macau, which is before I met you, they, they didn't really have many dorm options or hostel options. And that is true even, uh, even to today. And I guess when most people are going over there to gamble, um, yeah, they've got the cash. <laughs> they've got money and there isn't even a lot of very good mid-range options to be honest. Yeah. So there are some sort of more like dingy hotels which are not located by the casinos, not located by the main attractions and you can probably find something for under a hundred US dollars but don't expect a lot at that price which is kind of why we recommend doing it by day. If you're visiting Macau more for the culture and the food then you can definitely make a day trip from Hong Kong but if you do want to gamble and do some of the more entertainment, the shows at night and stuff then you probably will just have to cough up the money, stay in a casino uh, or like famous hotel and pay a bit more and we have notes on that here so a two to three star is going to be between 88 to 160 US dollars and if you're looking for four or five stars 150 all the way up to 600 US bucks so yeah bring your money <laughs> <laughs> so there are Airbnb options uh, we noticed some places where you can get a shared room for 40 or 60 dollars a night so that's actually not bad well not a shared room like your own private room in someone's house but right. you won't have the whole apartment yeah sorry that's basically. that's what I meant and I noticed that those places weren't like right in the core of the city. So again, more on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. And if you're wanting to get your own place, you're looking at 80 to $200 plus. Yeah. So yeah, again, not very cheap, um, but it is available. So next up, let's talk about transportation around Macau. And one thing we really enjoyed is that all of the casinos and hotels offer free shuttles from the terminal because obviously they want to lure guests like come gamble at our place. Yeah. So they offer free transportation, which is great for visitors on a budget, I would say. It really is. So you can literally arrive at one of the ferry terminals and then hop on one of these free shuttle buses and they will mm -hmm. take you to all of the major casinos and also to some major attractions as well. Yeah. Too. So it's actually a really good way to get around the city and it's absolutely free. So you can tell that is our favorite way to get around Macau. <laughs> 
hands down. So aside from free transportation, also just walk around Macau on foot. I mean, a lot of places, once you arrive in a certain area, like if you're in Taipa or you're near Sonata Square or St. Paul's Ruins, for example, a lot of the places that you can just reach by foot and it's just, it's a really pleasant way just to walk around in Macau. So it's very pedestrian friendly and we definitely recommend that. That being said, we would not recommend walking from the strip where all the casinos are all the way to Sonata Square because you're not gonna oh. make it. Take a bus to get there yeah. and then you can walk around once you're there. That would really be pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another option is you can take also public buses which are fairly cheap and also taxis. So a taxi shouldn't cost more than about five US dollars for short rides and uh, yeah if you're in a hurry that would probably be your best bet because you do sometimes have to wait around for the shuttle buses. Mm -hmm. You have to, they, they leave at designated times for example and if something's too far to walk, then yeah, consider taking the taxi or one of the public buses. So for all you budget travelers out there, next up we're going to talk about free attractions you can visit around Macau. And number one, I would say the area around Sonato Square, which yeah. is kind of like the main plaza, the main square. You have lots of Portuguese architecture and tiles. Yeah. Um, you can get some street food while you're there. Yeah, it's it's nearby a lot of other major attractions mm -hmm. and it's just a very central area and it's a great place to people watch as well. Yeah, and once you're at Sonato Square, you can walk all the way to the ruins of St. Paul, which yeah. is basically the facade of a church. Like, the building is no longer there, so all you see is the facade and yeah. the steps leading up to it. But I would say that's that's a pretty cool walk yeah. from those two points. It's it's a major landmark, and mm -hmm. you're going to see tons of people taking photos there. Yes. It's, it's quite photogenic, and it's also, as you pass from Sonato Square all the way to the ruins, that you're gonna see probably, that's where you can get most of your street food too. Yes, free samples of food, guys. Yeah, there's free food. There's th that was another one of our first things. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these stores, they lure people in by offering free samples. So you can get yeah. free samples of almond cookies, free samples of like the jerky. pork jerky, pork jerky with glazed honey. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different free samples. So hit those up before you actually purchase something. Mm -hmm. So obviously another free attraction are all the hotels and casinos. And I mean, some of them are themed. You have the Venetian, which looks just like Venice. Yeah. And you have the Parisian, which looks just like Paris. Right. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, you can go hotel and casino hopping. Yeah, and some of them are really cool inside. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the nice thing is that all of the shopping area and all of the entertainment area is is free to anyone in the public. Yeah, it's only the casino part where you have to be gambling in order to go into. You can't just wander around in there. So aside from Sonata Square, another really cool place uh, where you can see a lot of Portuguese architecture and visit some museums is Taipa, mm -hmm. and it's also a great place to get street food. That's where we tried our Macanese egg tarts mm -hmm. and a few other delicious pork chop buns. Yes. So that's a great place to wander around. So we've already talked about free attractions in Macau. Now we're going to move on to things that you're probably going to want to pay for. So first up we have Macau Tower. Yeah, and I mean you're going to get a great view of Macau from there. All of the casinos, all of the different islands. So yeah, definitely go up it. This is actually a confession time. This is something that we haven't done before, but uh, yeah. If you're into towers and getting really good views, then definitely check it out. And you know what? I'm pretty sure you can go bungee jumping. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, it's something we've never really researched no, because we, we have no interest. But you can go bungee we're jumping. We're both terrified of heights, so that's not something we would do. But uh, <laughs> if you have a little more courage than us, mm -hmm. consider it. So the price to go up Macau Tower is 135 patakas, and it's obviously a little bit cheaper if you're a child or a senior citizen. So this next attraction that you're going to want to pay for is a mouthful, so I'm going to read it to you. It is called City of Dreams, House of Dancing Water Spectacular. Right. And basically, it's a nightly show, kind of like a performance. So if you like entertainment, that's something you can do. This yeah. is located on the strip where all the casinos are. Right. And again, that's something we haven't done, but it's mm -hmm. very, very highly rated. But this one's quite pricey. So in terms of prices, it's going to cost you... 580 Hong Kong dollars, which is about $75 per ticket. And of course, we couldn't talk about Macau without mentioning gambling. So, so many people go there to gamble, and if you're so inclined, you can spend as little or as much as you want. You can drop huge wads, wads of cash in Macau, and if you want to gamble, there is no uh, shortage of places that will take your money. And there's probably no limit to how much you can bet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so next up, we're going to talk about different foods you can try in Macau. And we actually made an entire video yes. dedicated to Macanese street food. So you can check that out if you're interested. If you're a bit of a food. 
beauty. There um, are just tons of options. Like we yeah. ate like seven or eight different things. So there's just tons of things to try. And we ate really well. So I would say one of my favorites was the egg tarts, the yes. Portuguese egg tarts. Those were so tasty. Oh my gosh. So crispy those, and flaky. Those are so good. Those like rival the egg tarts that you find in Portugal, the original mm -hmm. ones. What are they, the pasta, pasta de nata? Yeah, 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 they were so good. Those are fantastic and they're also really cheap. So another really popular one to have that we highly recommend is a pork chop bun. It's yeah. basically like just like a pork chop in a bun. And the, the outside of the bun is crispy and then it's really doughy inside. It's yeah, just, it's toasted. Yeah, it's toasted. It's just really good. Trust me. Try that one. Just make sure you don't like bite it to the bone like oh Sam did. Because, gosh. I mean, the pork chop yes. obviously has I, the chop I in didn't there. see the bone <laughs> like, and <laughs> I, I bit into it really hard and I thought, oh my gosh, did I just... What did I just I did I chip a tooth? So like, I was wondering, am I actually going to be able to enjoy a cow or do I have to go to have make an emergency, emergency dentist, dentist appointment? Okay, so next up, and this is for the more adventurous uh, people, try the durian ice cream. Oh, oh my gosh. It smells bad. I love durian. You hate it. So if, if you already know you hate durian, then obviously don't Stay try away. it. But yeah, if you've never tried it, try the durian ice cream. It's really good. And the next one I want to talk about is basically the sweet pork jerky that you can find. Mm -hmm. These are just thin strips that are cut up with scissors and put yeah. into a bag. They're really good. It's really soft. It's so different from North American jerky or also biltong, which is something I've tried from South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's really soft jerky. It's really sweet. Makes a great snack. And another thing I really enjoyed trying was the almond cookies. Oh yeah. And those for some reason just make me think of Christmas. They're like little small bite-sized cookies and they're very dry. Yeah. So if you're gonna buy a whole bunch, you probably want to enjoy them with tea or some kind yeah, of beverage. But maybe a bubble good. tea. We, we yeah. enjoyed ours with bubble tea. Mm. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, and if you go by some shops, you can actually see them making the almond cookies, which yeah. is fascinating. So I would recommend buying them from one of the shops that's making them right in front of you. You know yeah. it's fresh. You know it's good. And another thing you can try in Macau is Portuguese wine. We didn't really oh, get to this. I but... highly regret not doing that. Yeah. We just didn't have time. I love wine, so I would have loved to try the Portuguese wine. Apparently, it's really affordable and really good quality too. Next time. Now moving on to things we loved about Macau. Yeah, so these are all of the things we really liked about Macau and what made it an attractive place to visit. So number one would be the free hotels and casinos. You can just wander around and I mean you've got these grand buildings so yeah. it's kind of like if you if you were there just to for shopping and entertainment you could literally make that the focus of your entire trip mm -hmm. there's just so many different casinos and hotels to visit and every time we go back there's a new one there's yeah. like a new building they build fast in Macau, oh, i have to say they sure do yeah anyways another thing we enjoyed was the street food which yes. which we've mentioned a few times already that was really oh great. my gosh the mackinac street food is amazing and one of the advantages of snacking on street food all day long as opposed to going to sit down restaurants is it yeah. really helps you manage your time you can see and do a lot more when you're just like picking up these little bites having something quick to eat and then moving on to the next thing and it's a lot more affordable than going out for a fancy yes. meal in macau because i have a feeling that would not be affordable no it, would, it could get pricey really quick and yeah all the mackinac street food is really cheap like everything was under five dollars some things were even under one dollar mm -hmm. so really cheap really delicious Highly recommend it. So another thing we really like is all of the Portuguese architecture and ruins that you can find throughout the city. It's just fascinating to see that type of architecture in, you know, a part of the world where you normally wouldn't associate yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah. It, it just gives a, like, some people come obviously to Macau to gamble and to do other things like that, but you can also be a culture vulture and enjoy the Portuguese architecture and other things. So another point to add is that this is such an easy day trip. Like it's yeah. just so convenient to hop in a ferry and you're there. Right. So the ease of travel is another like really it's, alluring thing it, about yeah, Macau. It's, it's very attractive and if you want to do it the way we did it, we woke up really early in Hong yeah. Kong. We went to the ferry terminal, bought our ticket, quickly went through immigration. Do remember to bring your passport. Yes. You are going from one special administrative region to another from Hong Kong to Macau. So don't forget to do that. But yeah, you can go buy your ticket on the spot. We were we were on the boat within like, what, 30 minutes? Yeah. And then within an hour in Macau, immigration yeah. was a breeze there. And so like by, I don't know, by like eight or nine, we were like already rolling. We were, we were sightseeing, exploring Macau. So yeah. yeah. 
and then you can come back again late at night mm -hmm. and that's that makes for a great really busy day I find that when you have some time scarcity like that you just you just maximize your time yeah you, you really run around you really run we did. we did and we saw a lot and uh, yeah check out our video to see what we did in just yeah. one day and one final point about things we loved about Macau would have to be the free transportation yes. provided by the hotels and casinos. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, hotels and casinos. Even though we didn't really spend money in I know. We took like three different shuttles yeah. while we oh, were there. Oh, what was it? Was it with the Wynn Hotel? Going from the Wynn Wind Hotel back to the ferry, we were the only people the only on people. that shuttle. And they drove us. It was a private ride. It was yeah. awesome. So yeah, do take advantage of the free transportation. These these casinos and hotels, they have tons of money, so you don't have to feel feel guilty about it. All right, moving on to the things we hated about Macau, basically the things that we disliked about Macau. And the first thing that comes up is the accommodations. The lack of budget and mid-range accommodations. It really outprices a lot of travelers and visitors. But obviously, the city's making a lot of money, so uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon and I don't see there being a lot of budget accommodations both now and in the future. So another thing that we kind of hated about Macau is that it's, let's say by mid-afternoon a lot of the major attractions like Sonata Square, St. Paul's Ruins it is just packed with people. Super crowded, oh. oversaturated. Yeah, this, it's a little bit overwhelming. So the way that you can get around that is to visit these earlier in the morning, yeah. um, especially if you're staying in Macau. We didn't have that option because we got to these around the mid-afternoon, but it was a little bit overwhelming. Like, yeah, like there was a point where we weren't actually moving. We were no. just standing there in yeah. a crowd, like kind of getting pushed and shoved. <laughs> So that wasn't so pleasant. I guess that's one of the downsides. Right. So to like like we said to to get around that visit during off hours. And the last thing that I didn't really <sighs> enjoy was the ferry ride coming back. It was totally fine on the way there, but on the way back it was super choppy and like the boat was <laughs> bouncing up and yeah. down. And that's when I understood why they have seat belts on, yeah. on the seats on the ferry. It's because like you're getting some serious air and to, it was like yeah, to, oh. To be honest, it doesn't bother me as much. Like I don't get a seasick. And yeah. one one tip we can offer is to try to get a seat on the second level. That's yeah. that that is never as choppy as on the first level. Yeah. So yeah, try to get your seat on the second level, especially if you mind the the choppy waters mm -hmm. and if you get seasick easily. Yeah, so I would say those are all our travel tips for Macau. I hope you found them useful and we wish you a wonderful trip if you're traveling there soon. Absolutely. Do visit Macau. It's, it's, it's definitely worth at least one visit there at one point in your life. Bye! Bye.